Welcome to Kana's Kitchen. I am Kana, and as you can see, this is not my kitchen. I am in the home of Laura Ricketts, and this is her kitchen. Welcome. And this is Laura Ricketts. She is one of my dearest friends, and I can always count on Laura to uh, bring me a pot of soup or bring me a batch of cookies when I'm not feeling well. And I've even had a child say to me, Mom, why don't you have another baby so Laura can bring some more cookies? It's a good enough reason for me. Mm -hmm. So today, Laura is going to be the cook and she's going to show us a thing or two about cookies. You all have now left Kana's kitchen where health reigns and you are welcome to the Ricketts kitchen where we believe in full fat and 100% butter with sweet cream the way God intended it. <laughs> so you want me just to go right into what cookies are? Launch right in. Okay. Um, when um, I was in my 20s, I lived in southern Indiana in Lawrenceburg, and there was a lady there named Mary Nelson. Mary, I love you. She was our cookie lady, and she just created these fantastic cookies that, you know, she just seemed to kind of do this, and now it was a batch of cookies. She had four little kids, and it was fantastic. It was like going to uh, Mrs. Fields Cookies. Ooh. And in fact, she used to work in Mrs. Fields Cookies. Uh -huh. And so there was a time when I said, Mary, Mary, am I worthy to have some of your knowledge? <laughs> and she told me some things, and this is what I'm handing on to you. Because we are in Fulton County, I'm hoping this doesn't get out to other people and that it spoils it. And now all of um, the blue ribbons for all of the state fairs and the county fairs are gonna be won by these. But this is just for you guys because we live here and uh, you are on the inside. So keep it on the down low. Down low. <laughs> so the first thing you do when you make cookies is make sure that you turn on your oven right when you start. And by the time you're done mixing up your cookies, your oven will be preheated and ready to go. So do that, turn on your oven now and don't forget that it's on and then come back here, we'll wait for you. Okay. So Waited. you start off with Cana. You start off creaming your fat and your sugars together. Ah, now I see you have different fats. I have different fats. Okay. Um, on the back of your chocolate chips usually is a recipe, mm -hmm. but what I've done and what I've learned from Mary Nelson, thank you Mary, is that I use both butter and Crisco. I grew up, I think, using just Crisco. Do you, did your mom bake growing up? Um, margarine was our staple, I think. Okay, I've and got we all would this use plastic in my blood. I'm mm -hmm. trying to detox. You're doing a good job of it. <laughs> so um, the first thing you do, also besides starting the oven, if you know you're going to make cookies, just get out a stick of butter and let it come to room temperature. And what you're theoretically supposed to do is do the same with your eggs. They should be at room temperature. Um. I don't know why but they're supposed to be at room temperature. Um, probably so that if they're really cold and they're mixing in with your fat, it's not going to make it harder to mix. Okay, makes sense. So um, usually the recipes call for one cup of some form of fat, whether yes. it is Crisco or a butter flavored Crisco or a margarine mm -hmm. or whatever it is. I use one stick of unsalted butter Okay. And I have learned that because um, I've heard people say with salted butter, you're not sure from package to package how much salt is actually inside of it, and it will affect the outcome of your recipe. Okay. When you put, add salt in with I cookies. I did not know this. So okay. I always use unsalted. Good. I buy it on sale and I put it in the freezer, and okay. you can thaw it yeah. butter really easily. So do a cup of butter and a cup of Crisco. And the way I measure my Crisco is I have this... Um, Wait, a cup or half cup? A half cup of butter and a half cup of Crisco okay. together to make a cup of okay. the fat. Mm -hmm. I like to use this Pampered Chef that is thing. Nice. I, I am one. not a huge gadget person, but I really enjoy this because you can, when you do peanut butter cookies mm -hmm. or honey or molasses or Crisco, you can put it into your measuring cup. Yeah, and all the scraping is done for you. I mean to get it out. To get it out. That is nice. You know, I try to make sure there's no pockets of air in there. Okay. And then you push it and it comes out pretty cleanly. Oh. The other thing with Great this gadget. is that there's cups and there's metric. Oh. And so I have used this as a gift to give to missionaries overseas mm -hmm. when they have cookbooks that talk about metric and they don't nice. know how to convert it. Mm -hmm. It's got both on there. Nice. So, um, the thing with the different fats, the reason why I use the two, is that butter has a lower melting point, and this is my son, Will. 
back there, I the will. eater of cookies. <laughs> Crisco has a higher melting point and butter has a lower melting point. Okay. If you use all butter in your recipes, your cookies are going to be flatter. Don't know if you realize that. Mm, because it's now. going to melt quicker in yeah. your oven. Okay. And so my mom really likes the crispy Thin. ones. And so she mm -hmm. on purpose uses the butter and it melts out flat. If okay. you like tall, puffy ones, mm -hmm. using 100% Crisco is going to help that. Okay. I use a little bit of both because I like the, um, the taste of the butter. So you put the fats in there. Are you an extra child? You can kind of lick the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and then we put the sugars in at the same time. So this recipe calls for three-fourths cup white sugar and three-fourths cup brown sugar. When you measure brown sugar, you always want to press it down into the cup because it is dense and if you don't, you're not going to get the right amount. So I always just scoop it in there and push it down on the bag. Do you get a co-op brown sugar or do you have? I get Sam's Club brown sugar when okay. I get it. A big one? Yeah, a big one. Do you not use much brown sugar? Um. It depends on what season, how how um, many children are begging me for cookies. Okay, is I that what use. you use it for? I or do. quick breads? Mm-hmm, quick breads, yeah. Okay, so we get both of those in there and I'll get my, get this out of the way. And then when you mix them together, it's called creaming the fats and the sugars. Now, um, a lot of people I know will use this handy dandy yeah. thing in back, the KitchenAid. Or I grew up just using a handheld mixer. Mm -hmm. That is fine for this point of the recipe, but later I will tell you why it's best to be using a spoon. Oh, okay. So when you cream, you're actually, first you, you mix it, but you want to get it a little bit past this point until it's, you can see it gets a little bit of air beat into it, a little bit fluffy. And that air is going to, again, help the cookies to have a little bit more form. And there's nothing that smells better than butter and sugar mm -hmm. mixed together. Shortbread cookies, that's almost all there is. It's mm. butter, sugar, and flour. Ah. There is no uh, leavening agent and there's no eggs. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, shortbread. Kind of yeah, nice. <laughs> You're going to cookie. <laughs> okay, so after we do that, then we add the wet ingredients. For this, it is the eggs, which again are at room temperature. Mm -hmm. You enter them, put them in one at a time, I'd and like incorporate them. them. Two at a time, that would be very interesting. Well, there was one time, Kana, I must have been bored. Did you do that? No, on the side of like the Nestle's package, it says if you have any questions, you can call. Uh huh. And so my dog was interested <laughs> and said, whoa, no. <laughs> Yeah. So I called them once and said, why do I have to enter them one at a time? And it, it puzzled them a little bit. We rickets are good at asking questions that puzzle people. Yeah. And they said, I think it's just a matter of the incorporation. You want the egg to be incorporated till the wet look is gone. Okay. And I think that's just going to be easier if it's one at a time. It's I love this. This is great. That does look yummy. This looks yummy. I, yeah. Did you eat lunch before you came over? <laughs> I did. And again, at this point, if you do a little bit of extra s stirring, you're just incorporating some air. Okay. It's just a Getting pretty, fluffy. yeah, fluffy, mm -hmm. still pretty fluid. Then the next thing we add is the vanilla. And I can give a little chat about vanilla. My vanilla bottle looks a little interesting. Wow. Do you make your own? I do. <gasps> Love it. Okay. Give us a chat. This is a vodka bottle. Yes. So um, you make vanilla. You can look it up online. Mm -hmm. You buy the cheapest kind of vodka. Okay. Because um, what you do is that the alcohol makes an extract. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to see here. You can see some. Your beans. Vanilla beans. Yes. I bought vanilla beans off of eBay. I cut them into How many half beans inch. do you have in there? That's where it's been a while since I've made this. So... Um, you would have to look it up online. I know it's at least three. Okay. And you, the first time I made it, I split them lengthwise. Mm -hmm. But when I read about it this time, this was just as good and it's you easier. You just snipped them. 
Yes, you okay. cut them into pieces, you put them into the vodka and mm -hmm. leave it alone for a few weeks until it's a dark color and you can even see with this light, you can hardly even see through it. Yeah. Now some of you might be saying, what in the world, you're buying alcohol, you're making vodka vanilla extract and that actually is what vanilla extract is yeah. if you buy it from the store. Yeah. Um, it is an alcohol that takes the flavor of whatever it is, whether it's lemon or right. orange or whatever it is. Can I smell it? And what happens is that when you bake, the alcohol bakes out and you're left with the oh, essence of the vanilla. Good. Just like what I buy at the store. It smells yeah. really good. And it's so much cheaper. Mm -hmm. And I bake a lot. Yes. So it's useful. Mm -hmm. But it actually is not any different from what you get in the store. It's just less expensive. And mm -hmm. it's, I know where it came from. That's right. So How much you vodka uh, Say it again. How much vodka? How many beans? Um, this is. 750 milliliters. I didn't get the smallest container and I think it's three beans, but I would recommend looking it up online. Just look up how do you make vanilla extract and it will give you a little bit more of a yeah. formula. But um, I've made it several times and the last time there was some gap and I would they had a lot more information and a lot more beans and a lot more selection of the, where the beans are from, Madagascar yeah. vanilla beans versus, yeah. I don't know what. And, and definitely watch for sales too, because sometimes you'll find they're like $12 a bean. They can be right. really, really expensive. Really expensive. This was a bulk bean that mm -hmm. was made on purpose with this and it included the nice. directions. Oh, good. Some people will also use bourbon instead mm -hmm. of vodka and that gives it a slightly different flavor. And I just want the vanilla flavor and not another yeah. flavor on top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you put in one teaspoon okay. of that, and nice. now we're ready for our dry ingredients, our flowers, excuse me, that. So here's my flour, and then salt and baking soda, and that's it. Oh, chocolate chips, the most important thing. Yes, chocolate. So, do you know the proper way to measure flour? I'm waiting for you to tell me. Okay. <laughs> I have a very, I have a friend who's very curious who contacted me at one point and said, Laura, the bag on the side says that there is, you know, 36 one tablespoon servings and I have been counting them and I am not getting my full amount of servings. Why is that? I have no idea why she contacted me. But um, I said to her, well, friend whose name is not being included, but that's okay because she's not watching. Um, I said, are you measuring it correctly? Because flour with weight and with, um, with shipping will pack down. Yes. So what you're supposed to do is use a spoon and you spoon it into your measuring cup. And that allows, when you spoon, you've got some of the heavier but also some of the light. And when you spoon it in, it kind of all evens out. Uh -huh. So you spoon it above where it's supposed to be. Okay and then you level it with the back of a knife. Ah. You don't tap it to get it down there, you okay. just level it. So you've got both the packed and the loose in there. Okay. And that's how flour is supposed to be measured. Do I do it that way all the time? No, I don't, but this is a TV show. <laughs> so we are supposed to have two and a quarter cups of flour. I am measuring with a three quarters cup measuring cup. Okay. So this is a math problem for all you kids. If you want cookies, how many of these do I use to get two and a quarter, and a quarter. cups? That's right, three. <laughs> Ooh, yay! Um, I'll tell you later. Now the last two ingredients besides the piece de resistance is <laughs> translation piece of resistance oh sounds almost like the lego movie that was good is one teaspoon of baking soda and that is our leavening agent this is why we're going to actually get a, a cookie isn't um, like a pita bread flat but we right. get a little bit of the mm -hmm. small holes in it the air pockets and it's supposed to be a teaspoon of salt. I never put in entirely a teaspoon because I can't tell the difference. Can you? Oh yeah, I like more salt. <laughs> you want me to put the full in? Oh no, you're good. I like salt and chocolate, it's delicious. You wouldn't have known that, would you, from watching this show earlier? <laughs> okay, so this is one of the things, 
um, that I learned from Mary, and this is one of the reasons why I do not use the Mix Master. Okay. Because once you add the leavening agent, which is the baking soda, mm -hmm. the more you stir it, the more tough it will get. Right. So if okay. you beat the daylights out of it, whether it's with the handheld, whether it's with the Mix Master, whether it's with a, a spoon, you can still, you think, I am mixing it, I'm mixing it, I'm doing a good thing. You're not. Mm -hmm. From this point on, the less I mix it, the better the cookies, the more tender the cookies will be. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that's not what you want, but that's my goal right now. So um, when you read most recipe books, they will have you put the dry ingredients in a separate bowl. Yes. Maybe whisk it together uh -huh. and then put it on top and mix it in. Yes. What Mary talked about is she said, just put the flour in. Mm -hmm. That basically covers the wet stuff. Okay. And then put in your salt and um, baking soda on top. Okay. When you stir to incorporate the flour, you're stirring in the baking soda and the salt as well. Okay. You don't mess one more bowl. Now let me ask you, on the back of a package, it typically mm -hmm. says add baking powder as well. And I notice you don't add any baking powder at all. I am not familiar with baking powder in, in cookies. cookies. I'm familiar with baking powder Just in baking soda. In um, biscuits. Some, okay, okay. Biscuits, and because I think of that's the buttermilk. because it uses buttermilk. It activates it. Correct. Okay. That okay. works with buttermilk. Mm -hmm. um, and so the biscuits soda and scones. with anything non-acidic. Correct. Yes, soda with non-acidic and then powder with acidic. That's my understanding. Okay. So um, from this point on, I'm going to stir it as little as possible, but I do want to incorporate it in. I'll go all the way around the outside, to the inside. It's really soft because of, I've creamed the butter well. If you want to bake cookies and you don't have um, a stick of butter at room temperature, this bowl is not microwavable, but I have one that is, and I will put it at thaw at maybe 30 seconds. Okay. And then pull it out and see how that is. That looks really good. See, yeah. I have not stirred it very much. It's mm -hmm. almost entirely incorporated. Yeah. It's not completely. I wouldn't scoop this out into a um, tray yet. Okay. At this point, when it's almost, but not quite incorporated, mm -hmm. I add my Ghirardelli 60% cacao okay. bittersweet chocolate. So how do you pronounce that? Because I've heard it pronounced a couple different ways. Cacao? Um, Ghirardelli. Ghirardelli. Ghirardelli is made in America, San Francisco chocolate. Oh, I love it's it. It's good stuff. It's great. I grew up with Nestle's. This is at, at a point, if you just want to, if you know your chocolate chip cookie, why don't you experiment with slightly different chips? Because mm -hmm. I was, I was, um, Nestle, Nestle girl. girl, I grew up that way. Mm -hmm. Nestle Toll House, that's mm -hmm. the way it is. Right. Then my then. tongue started to want a little, something a little bit darker. This isn't yes. entirely dark. I mean, this isn't 70%, but it's, yeah. uh, there's something in me that enjoys this. Yes, me too. And I am so shocked that my son is not here at this moment because he can sense. Oh, oh. <laughs> He, he can sense when the chocolate chip bag gets opened. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Children. Oh, heaven. That is heaven. Okay. <laughs> Quiet in the peanut gallery. Okay, so really, it's just, and I go all the way to the bottom, make sure I don't have any little pockets of flour. Okay. And here's our goobery goodness. Now, yes. um, those at home who are watching this, do not eat any raw dough. Don't. Don't do it because... Because salmonella. Salmonella can be carried in eggs. Can be. So if you'll just hold on just a second. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. <laughs> no, 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 don't do that. No, Go away, no. we don't want you ill. No. Get out of the room. Can't be ill. Get out of the room. All right, okay. So. At this point, at this point, looking for something to wipe the evidence off. There we go. <laughs> so, at this point, we're ready to bake them. Some of your baking sheets will require greasing. Yours are well used. Did you show this? Look at this. This is perfect. My Love mother it. should not be watching this. Oh, she wouldn't like that? Well, this was one of my birthday presents from my mom. Oh. She gave me one birthday, two cookie sheets and a mop. She did? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a good present. I'd like that. Maybe not the mop. My thank you said, Mom, I looked for the on-off switch on the mop. I couldn't find it anywhere. <laughs> 
Anyway, um, despite me being a little bit disappointed at the time, I have used these cookie sheets a lot and they are some kind of nubby surface that doesn't nice. need the greasing. Yes, I like it that. It doesn't hold on as mm -hmm. much. Um, and this is my other little gadget that I have, which is also Pampered Chef. That's I a kind happy of gadget. I like that. I was kind of confused when I first saw it or heard people talk about it. Mm -hmm. I use it all the time now, though, with my cookies. Yeah. Um, it's, it's on my list. Is it? Yeah. It's almost like a melon baller, but it's mm -hmm. not sharp enough to get into a melon. Yeah. Um, but I use it when I'm scooping out muffins. Ah. And okay. I use it for cookies. Okay. You just take it, push it on the side to make it flat, mm -hmm. and then you... What in the world do you need, child? <laughs> you want to help? Oh. Okay. Yeah. This is a great way to create helpers. So you push it against the side, try to make it flat, and you want to give enough room between them because they are going to flatten out maybe, maybe two inches. Yeah, this is help, just to <laughs> let you know. Is this how help works at your house, right. Kena? Oh, yes, yes. I thought about you recently, I think, Faced with my own Mount Washmore. Oh. <clears throat> Can't miss a day. Mm -mm. So we scoop them out and you want to leave some space. Um, the way if you, if you don't have one of these scoops and you're thinking, uh, you use a tablespoon for bigger cookies and use another tablespoon to push it off yeah. so you don't get completely coated. I really like those. Those are handy. It, good job, Will. These um, cookies require 11 to 12 minutes. Sometimes it depends on if you've already been cooking, if you're... Okay. And it depends on your own stove. Mm -hmm. No, no, we're done. No. Okay. Thank you. And then... Oh, yes. I'll show them. When you put it in here, then. Oh, how about that magic? Ta da! We have our beautiful oh. cooked. Yes. Baked cookies. At various degrees of. I'm going to put them on there. Yep. Oh, I see. Oh. Perfect cookies, gorgeous. Well, they look handmade and sometimes... Yes. That's what we want. I like that look. A little bit of... Mm -hmm. A little bit of love. A little bit of... A little bit of Laura love right here. And we'll have to send you home with some so your children know that you don't have to give birth to get them. Appreciate <laughs> 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 that. <laughs> Having the children can be work enough. Uh, yes. <laughs> And that is how you make this particular kind of Mary Nelson approved chocolate chip cookie. Again, I would recommend that you just try around different chocolate chips just to see something just slightly different that sets yours apart. Yeah, I like that. And it can be fun. So, Kena, let's sit down and have a little. Have some. Oh, this is beautiful. Perfect. I am tethered. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh well, look, you a and munchkin me. came in. Yes. Coffee and cookies. Yep. Love it. Do you want a cookie? You don't want a cookie? You like that sucker instead? You don't want a cookie? He likes a sucker. Oh my goodness. Ooh, yay. Thank you for coming to Laura Land and leaving Cana Land for just a little bit. <laughs> Welcome to my kitchen. Thanks. Good. Thank you so much for joining us today. I wish you were here enjoying this incredible, delicious chocolate chip cookie a la Laura Ricketts. We'll see you again next time. Have a great week. Bye.